Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex. Um, I've once again been very busy. Um, first of all, uh, I was running low on copper. Um, so I set up two new copper outposts. Uh, number six and number seven here. Uh, these are pretty big. Between the two of them we have 32 million pieces of ore. Um, and then I also have my 56% productivity bonus, um, which will help a lot. We're up to mining productivity 29 now. Um, and you can see that we've launched 107 rockets so far. So, um, so research is progressing along, uh, not certainly not at the 500 a minute that we were shooting for. Um, like our one minute average right now is 380, um, as low as, well, 50 a minute for the purple ones. I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, you know, we're missing, uh, missing various components and running short on things. So, um, so that's a work in progress, but I did add these, uh, these new, um, mining outposts. Um, I started color coding the trains. So the copper, uh, are a nice, uh, burnt orange. Tried as best I could to match the color of the copper, but it's a little bit hard. I'm not an expert at that. In any case, uh, we have both of those. Uh, this one still has a lot of room for more mining drills, but, uh, but at this point, the, the miners are not the bottleneck. Um, we're really more limited by the robots on how fast we can load these trains. Um, but on each one, let's see, I've got four trains going to this one and I think three, yeah, three going to this one. Um, and they're, they're not having any trouble keeping those trains filled up. Um, I don't think I added any more irons. Oh no, I did add another iron number seven over here. Uh, this is a relatively small patch, but uh, 8 million, and it was close to uh, to the rocket fuel area, so it was pretty quick and easy to add it. Um, I'm actually getting to the point where I can set these up a lot more quickly. In the meantime, uh, Copper 4 is nearly done. <laughs> uh, we've got one, we've got four or five drills uh, going right now, so there's not very much left there at all. That'll be kaput uh, fairly soon. Um, also copper three is almost done. So that's why I set up those new outposts because um, those other outposts were almost gone. And then over here we've got 40 and 21 million. Uh, so we've got quite a lot of copper ore still left within our walls. Uh, 18, 13 million. Um, so I'm not going to need to push the walls out anytime soon. We'll be able to keep this up for a while. Oh, and then down here, here's 35 million and it's not even all scanned yet. 18, 18. Yeah. So there's a lot of copper around. I'm not too worried about that. Um, iron on the other hand, uh, we've got 18 million there. Uh, and that's about it really. I don't think I've got any more iron. Oh, yeah, these up here, but they're not very big. Or they're big, but they're not very rich. Um, so anyway, we're gonna probably have to start pushing out and looking for some rich iron patches because I just don't see any really enticing ones right now, uh, even outside of the walls. Well, here's 139 million, that'd be a good one. And that would be fairly easy to, to capture. All right. So the big thing that I wanted to show you guys today is the change that I made to the smelting bases in terms of the train management. Um, <clears throat> to me, it seemed like uh, a problem to have each station treated individually and then have to try to balance the delivery of ore to each one and try to balance the consumption of plates from each one. Um, it just seemed like 
I was always going to be having to make adjustments and moving trains from one station to another and so on. Um, so I decided to, to try to pool them together and do a little bit of load balancing, uh, at least as best I could. Um, so originally, I, I don't know if you remember, but earlier in the series in the circuit area, um, I had two copper unloading stations and I set up some logic circuits that would disable whichever station had the most plates um, so that when plates got delivered, it would go to whichever one had the fewest. And I was trying to think of a way to do something like that, but with five stations. Um, and I don't think there's a very easy way to determine uh, the greatest or the smallest of five using decider and arithmetic combinators. Um, I mean, I'm sure it could be done, but I didn't want to end up with a circuit with 20 combinators on it. So I got to thinking, and just because of the fact that the trains already will automatically go to the closest one, um, I settled on kind of an overflow system. Um, so I did, I named all of the stations the same. Um, so there's a copper smelting ore, and there's five of those, and then there's a copper smelting plate, and there's five of those, all right? And they all have the same name. And then here at the stacker, I added a station for each one, uh, which is just called copper smelting Q. Um, and I'll, they're all disabled right now, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but then... Basically what I did is I set the trains so that they go pick up the copper, they go to the queue, and then they go to ore. And in this case, they'll always go to the closest one that is enabled. All right, so if you're with me so far, let me keep going. Um, I'm counting how much ore and plate there is in each of these individual stations. And the ore stations are enabled as long as there's enough empty space to unload a full train. Um, and then the plate stations are enabled as long as they have enough ore or enough plate to fill a train. Otherwise, they shut off. Um, in this case, they're actually all turned on, so um, I can't show you that, but... Um, so if we look here, you know, there's only, well, almost no ore now. So, so this station is ready to receive ore. And then there are 38K plates and climbing. So this station is available to provide plates. All right, so this one just, this one just became disabled um, because it only has 23,000 plates. So that way, um, when the ore trains come in, um, They'll always go to the first one if it's available, and if it's not, then it'll go to the next available one, which in this case is the third, because that one was busy. Um, and then the same with the plates. When they come in for plates, they'll go, so the next train that comes in for plates will go here. That's an ore train. Um, <clears throat> every once in a while, something funny with the pathfinding will happen, and they'll go someplace that I wasn't expecting, but for the most part, this works pretty good. So, um, and I refer to this as like an overflow system because they'll they'll all go to this one until this one is full and then they'll overflow to the next one and the next one and the next one. So, um, you know, so when we're, when we're running at, at low volumes, um, the top couple of stations are not gonna get used very much. All right, uh, so that's how it works. Um, and then the other thing I did is I set up these combinators. Uh, let me get out of map view so I can show you the logic. So this is on an ore station. Um, so again, this one will, this is just duplicating the condition of the station. So the station is enabled as long as there's less than 41,000. Um, if there's less than 41,000, then there's enough space in the chest to unload a whole train. Um, and this is uh, checking for the same condition um, and giving me a green light. So that way I can just see if I have a green light for ore, I know that it can take a train. And then I use a cyan light for the plates. 
Um, and then those, those green and cyan signals, um, I send down the line. So you can see here, there's five green and five cyan. And the reason I do that, that comes down here and I have another combinator here. And I'm basically multiplying the green and the cyan and outputting a blue signal. Um, the reason I do that is because if, if these stations are on all the time, then every train is gonna stop here just for, you know, it, it'll just come to a stop and then immediately go. And that slows down the trains. Um, these are stopping just because the track ahead is busy, not because of these stations. And I thought that as long as they have a place to go, I would rather if they just came through here at full speed. Um, so basically, uh, these are set to be enabled if there's no blue signal. Okay, so blue less than one, basically meaning it's zero. Um, and the only way that there won't be a blue signal is if either there's no OR stations available or there's no cyan stations available. Okay, um, and the reason I did that is because if if a train was coming to, like there, there can be problems with the trains if they are coming to a station and then the station is disabled. So I want them to always have a station to go to. So that way if, for example, if an ore train is coming and all the ore stations are closed, then these stations will turn on and then it'll just stop at this station and wait. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that way, um, these stations are always disabled again, unless either all the ore or all this, all the plate stations are disabled. If that happens, then those stations will turn on and the trains will stop there. Um, but I don't expect that condition to be true very often at all. So for the most part, these are going to be bypassed. Okay, um, and then the nice thing about this setup is that all the ore trains, all the ore trains essentially have the same schedule, right? They go to wherever they go to load, and then they go to the queue, and then they go to the ore station. And you can see they're all pretty much the same. The only thing that differs is where they pick up from. Um, so that way it's very easy to add new trains. Um, you know, when I put these new outposts together, I just set up three or four trains for each one. Okay, I would have liked to have clicked on that. I guess it won't let me do it while it's moving. All right, so this one goes to copper seven and then it goes to the queue, which in this case is disabled. And then it'll go to copper smelting ore and it'll just pick whichever station is the first available one, right? Which is very often this first one, uh, but not always. Okay, um, and then I still have, I still have a few places where I take copper plate in a 1-4 train instead of a 3-8. So I still have uh, copper smelting plate four, and I have, two of those. I think it's just two. Yeah, I only have two of those. But now that I think about it, and these have the same enabling condition as as the station that for the eight train. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put put those those one four stations in the other positions as well. So let me go ahead and do that. That won't that won't take very long. We just have to move that. Uh, plop a station down. I need to hook it up to the red. Whoops. Okay. Hook it up to the red signal. And it's enabled when plate is. Oh, actually I can just... All right, that was dumb.
Where was I? <laughs> I was in this very dangerous place. That's where I was. All right, let's try that again. I was going to say that I can just copy paste the other station. All right, hook it up to red. There we go. Let's try to avoid going to my death. All right, copy and paste. There we go. Okay. So we'll just do that two more times. I wish you didn't have to get so close uh, to hook up the circuit wires. There we go. And one more. Hook up the red. And the station. Red circuit. Paste. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, that way the 1-4 trains won't always go to the same two stations. Um, what I saw happening there is that originally I only had one of those 1-4 stations down at the first stop. And what was happening is the, the station was staying enabled because it had 32,000 plates, but the first four positions were almost empty. So the train would come, the last four cars would fill up fast, and then it would just sit there waiting for the rest of them to fill up, which would sometimes take a while. Uh, so this way those will be equally balanced with the rest. Um, the other thing I've done is on the loading. Let me pick a train that picks up plate. Um, I added an inactivity condition on the fill up um, so that if, you know, if a plate train got here, for example, and let's say it filled up halfway, but it ran out of ore, I didn't want the train just sitting there for who knows how long waiting for more ore to come. I'd rather just have it deliver what it's got and then come back for more later. So I added an inactivity condition to all those trains. And I th think that's about it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention here is the the naming convention. You may have under you may have noticed I started putting underscores here. The reason I did that is cuz I noticed that if if you go to the train and you start searching. So in this place I was looking for copper. You're going to get everything with the word copper in it. And if I want copper ore, you're going to get everything. You're not just going to get the results that say copper ore. You're going to get anything with the word copper and anything with the word ore. It's like it treats each word as an ore instead of an and. Um, and that bothered me. So this way, when I keep things all one word with underscores, you know, I can look for copper smelting ore, and then I'm only going to see the ones that go to copper smelting ore. So that, that's the only reason that I did that. Whoops. Okay. So that's copper. Um, I did the same thing in the iron station. I actually did it here first and then duplicated it for copper. Um, so I have iron colored trains now as well. Um, this one's only got 164 pieces of ore left. You can go. Um, and in this case, I've only got one of the 1-4 stations set up. So we should go and create some more of those as well. So we'll do that now. Let's 
Let's see, iron smelting PAX. Right, so um, rockets are not launching very fast. Uh, I think we're mainly having problems with red circuits at this point. And I haven't spent a lot of time getting into that issue to fix it yet. Um, here it looks like we're waiting on plastic. Let me see what's going on with plastic. Well, it looks like it's just waiting to fill up. And these are all running slowly. It looks like it looks like the petroleum is the limiting factor. Yeah, we're low on oil here. That's why. Okay, well, it's on its way. I might have to tap a few more oil wells. But we'll get to that later. First, I wanted to get smelting fixed. Um, yeah, and like I said, having this type of arrangement allows me to add additional trains to the network very easily. All right, so I'm going to copy that one. Yeah, see, in this case, I'm only counting the first four sets of chests and enabling that way. But then this isn't synchronized with this signal. So I think I'm going to remove that and just have it use the same, the same condition that I have on the main station here. Probably the best thing to do would be just to convert everything to three, four trains. Um, but that was, that's going to require a lot of work. All right. So iron plate greater than or equal to 32,000. Yep. And then let me change the name here. So we'll go iron underscore smelting plate four. I think that's what I called the copper ones. Copper smelting. Yeah, underscore four. Okay. So I'll copy that and then we'll put that in each of these other positions as well. So I should just blueprint this. Should be able to just remove that, remove that. Put that down and paste, there we go. That's a little bit quicker that way. And again here. And paste, okay. So this, yeah, this ore station is actually disabled now because it is quite full. I think that's the first time I've seen an ore station get disabled. These are both enabled. These are both enabled. All right, so the next time a train comes in, uh, it won't go to that one. All right. So all that looks good. 
Um, since I made this train or made this change, like I said, I was able to add more trains pretty easily um, once I got those additional outposts running. And, and since then, we haven't had any problems with with plates running low. So I'm pretty pleased with the way it's working. Now, <clears throat> you could probably get 90% of this functionality without all the circuits if, if you just name the stations all the same, uh, because like I said, they will go to the closest available station. Um, but I wanted to take it an extra step and, and have it to where the stations would disable themselves if, um, if they were either too full to receive more or too low to fill up a train. I thought it would be a little more efficient that way. Okay, um, so we're going to head over to the circuits area next because I would like to essentially set up the same thing over there. Um, you may recall that the green circuits are one continuous robotic network. Um, I do have, I think, 2,000. Yeah, I've got a little over 2,000 logistics bots here. Um, but they still are kind of slow. Um, yeah, these are all... These are all stopped because they're full. So looks like we got plenty of copper. We got plenty of iron. We need more iron there. Um, and these are all named the same. Kind of like what I suggested over there. These are all named the same thing. So these are balancing on their own. Um, but like I said, uh, the, the robot network is so big you know, if, if, if a train comes and picks up circuits here um, and the only iron is down on the south side, it's the bots are going to be traveling back and forth at all distance, and I don't want that to happen. Um, so what I'm going to be doing next is uh, starting to separate these into individual robot networks. Um, so I'll basically tear down all of this except for the first station down here. I'll leave that one where it is and then I'll move up everything else far enough so that they're on their own networks. Um, there we go. Yeah, so we'll have to leave a gap in between each one uh, just like we did over here for copper and iron. That way the bots won't have as far to travel and it should be more efficient and then I can also set up those same uh, train controls to help balance the load and unload. So the fact that we're filling up trains uh, fairly quickly with circuits, but still running short on red and blue, would seem to indicate that most of our problem is with red circuit components, namely the plastic. Let's take a look here. All right, so we just delivered some oil and it's going to get sucked up very quickly. This is a very thirsty process uh, when it comes to oil. Um, I don't know if I showed you this, but uh, earlier when I expanded from six to ten plastic machines, um, I noticed that these were not running full speed. And at first I thought they were running low on coal, so I came and added a few more bots to this network, but um, after I looked at it more closely, I realized that it was actually the petroleum. And I had a lot of oil. Uh, it's just that this one setup, this uh, 5 one, was it 517, um, was not quite fast enough to feed it with all the petroleum that it needs. So I added another one. Now it's plenty fast, but it just, it, sucks down crude oil like uh, like a teenager drinking beer. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to have to set up some more oil outposts in the near future as well. In fact, that is a fairly cool
quick activity to accomplish. So I'll probably do that first, and then I'll come back and work on the circuits. Um, and then I'll I'll show you the results. Um, you've probably noticed that I'm I'm spending a little bit less time lately actually doing work in these videos um, and spending more time explaining stuff that I've already done. Um, I, I hope that you guys like that format. If, if you want to see me do more of the actual work on screen, um, I don't mind doing that. I just thought it might be a little more interesting for you guys to see uh, to see how things progress and not you know not watch me put stuff down with robots for 30 minutes because uh, you've already seen me do that quite a bit in the series. Um, what else? There was one other thing that I wanted to mention. Oh, I know what it was. Um, back at the science base, I set up right here. I set up combinators that count how many space science flasks we have in the bot network. And if it's less than a thousand, which is one launch's worth, uh, I send a I send a, a signal, which is that rocket port thing. There's also a green one just because I want the light to turn on. So if I see this green light, that means we need to launch a rocket and get more science. So and then that green that signal goes on the green wire and it goes all the way up here, and uh, you can't see it, but trust me when I say that it goes all the way to the rocket base and comes in here. Um, I have the same green light here so I can see whether a launch is needed or not. And then this inserter that puts in the satellite will only turn on if that is enabled. So if I get the rocket signal, which right now I have, then it'll insert a satellite so that the rocket will launch. Um, so that way I'm only launching rockets if I need more space science. Now, once we get up to full speed, um, this thing is going to need to run as fast as it can just to keep up. But for now, the you know the the rest of the science packs are not being produced fast enough, so I didn't want to waste resources just stockpiling science packs. So this way, it'll only it'll only launch a rocket if we actually need another uh, another thousand science packs. Uh, so right now we're just waiting, and this is waiting for red circuits still. Looks like it might be waiting for a while. So, all right. So that is uh, that's about all that I wanted to show you this time. Um, for the next episode, uh, as I mentioned, I'll set up some additional oil outposts. Uh, we do have we do have some more untapped oil that we can get to. Um, let's see. Let me show you where those are. Yeah, we have some here. We can combine these and put a loading point over here at iron four. Um, where else do I have some? This one is outside the base, but not too far. I could probably get to that pretty easily. Uh, yeah, here's one. This is a pretty sizable one with a lot of patches. I'll, I'll probably hit that one next. There's another one up here. So so we've got a few options to get more oil, again, without going outside the walls. But I think it won't be very long now before we're going to have to expand our area a little bit, kill some more biters. Um, I do have nukes now, so that's much easier than it used to be. So, uh, yeah, and there's some more here, too. So we'll work on that next, uh, and then I'll work on that train station setup for the circuits area. Until then, thanks again for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.